All right, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Cameron Kirk and I'm a software developer and I've had a lot of people tell me I need to check out ChatGPT. So that is what this video is going to be about. So if you don't know what ChatGPT is, it, um, it's basically an AI that uh, has a huge database of text. It can give you some pretty mind-blowing responses. So let's just sort of try this out right now. I'm just going to ask it, what is System Verilog? Uh, more or less it's correct. It talks about FPGAs, it talks about electronic design automation, and that looks pretty good. Is there a standard for the language? And it'll probably talk about IEEE, and then it talks about IEEE. Very cool. But, you know, this is stuff you can get off of Google. Let's start to look at where ChatGPT really shines. This full adder code, I, I wrote this up right before um, starting the video, I looked at the block diagram and I only specify the gates. I didn't say this is an adder, I said this is my module. I haven't tried this experiment yet, um, but I'm going to just copy this code. What does this code do? I'm not even going to tell it what programming language, we're just going to paste. This code defines a digital logic module named my module that implements a three input, one bit full adder. <laughs> uh, module takes three input signals. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, this adds two numbers. It's a full adder. That's great. It didn't tell you what language it's in, but I'm assuming that it has the context that I was asking about system language, system Verilog and all this stuff. Uh, it's kind of impressive. So no comments, just logic gates. And it tells me, that's a full adder. Um, that's that's pretty impressive for a AI. Uh, I asked it this question the other day, and I was pretty impressed with the response I got. I asked it um, for system Verilog. What are some good beginner projects? Whoops, I misspelled beginner, but it doesn't care. So, as a beginner in System Verilog, you can start with simple projects to gain a good understanding of the language, such as a simple digital circuit, a full adder, cool, an ALU, logical arithmetic unit, arithmetic and logic unit. I'm actually going to get rid of my mechanical keyboard while this is typing a response. Uh, memory modeling, processor modeling, oh, kind of interested in the memory modeling. These projects will give you a good foundation in System Verilog that will help you understand basic concepts. Uh, we asked it a different question, and earlier we asked it about my module. I'm going to ask it, write a test bench for my module. Here's an example of a Verilog, System Verilog test bench of my module module. All right, so we've got a my module underscore test bench, no ports, and it instantiated my module, DUT, device under test, and it's applied signals. This is cool. Initial test begin. S3, test four. Oh, cool. Finish. Can you update the test bench to create a VCD file or a value change dump file. Sure, here's the updated version of the test bench that generates a VCD value change dump file. So we're gonna get the same code again. While this is generating, um, uh, they recently came out with about a week ago an option to pay 20 bucks a month to get uh, more access. Sometimes they have downtime because there's a lot of people using it, but get get more access to uh, Chat GPT. And as of this morning, <laughs> I got out my wallet and I paid for it because I am really enjoying just like it's it's inspiring me so much to just ask it questions and have it generate you know basic code like this. All right, let's jump over to my developer environment. So. Um, what I'm about to show you is my new Verilog simulation environment. And if you're interested in how I set this up, um, here, let me get out of the way here. Uh, check out my video this Friday on my Verilog Fundamentals series. Uh, I actually show how this is all going to get set up. So I have these tasks over here. So I can click Build, 
and it's going to execute a script that will run Icarus Verilog, and I've already got my dot out. And I can run, and we get a VCD here. And then now here's the cool trick. Uh, I have this waveform button, and I click waveform. And what did it, oh, it wants it to be named top. Let me just rename my file here. The code that ChatGPT generated, put my value change dump file, would be called um, that. But now it should be named top because that's the name of my dot V. So I'm just gonna rename that and click waveform. And GTK wave just pops open suddenly and we are able to just start dropping in signals. Uh, I got pretty excited when I got this all figured out and set up. Um, and if you think this is cool, having this sort of access to uh, open source tools like that, all from Visual Studio Code, uh, it's all lightweight, really fast, I can get a lot of coding done. Uh, yeah, so the full adder works. We don't really need to have a test bench for a full adder. This is frankly ridiculous. Um, let's go ahead and shut down GKT Viewer. Just wanted to show off my um, setup here for Verilog. Okay, so we believe ChatGPT. It wrote the test bench just on the fly, and it was very happy to add in the system task to create the dump file and dump the variables. I'm going to try and recreate something I asked it yesterday. I told it, um, uh, what are some popular tools for system Verilog. All right, then I asked it, is there such a thing as a Verilog IDE? Yes, there is several integrated development environments available for Verilog, which provide comprehensive user-friendly environments. So if I see Icarus Verilog on here, I already know that that's not accurate. That's not true. Um, because Icarus Ver there's Icarus Verilog. So Icarus Verilog can only be invoked from the command line. It does not come with a graphical user interface, and it does not come with uh, you know things that make an IDE an IDE. Uh, this can be built into an IDE. It says it right there, integrated with other IDEs. Um, but yeah, so it'll tell me things confidently, like I asked it, is there such a thing as a Verilog IDE? And it tells me something that's not quite accurate. Um, and I think that's kind of interesting. And then if you tell it, um, like if you correct it, Icarus Verilog is not an IDE. It'll just say like, you're correct. <laughs> like, uh, okay, that is uh, interesting. But then, if I go off over here in a new chat, and I tell it, or I ask it, what is 2 plus 2? This thing is pretty impressive. So it knows what 2 plus 2 is. And then if I try to deceive it, and I try to tell it 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, it's able to stand by its word and say no, it's not equal to 4, or it's not equal to 5, it's equal to 4. Um, so, I don't really know how it does its trick. It knows when to put its foot down, and it knows when to back off when it states something that isn't quite what I asked. I think part of it is maybe it's just trying to be as helpful as possible, um, and it tries to give you a complete answer that'll give you things to research more. Um, even if it doesn't quite fit the question. It's, it probably knows like, oh, these are things you'd like to hear about type of thing. Um, cool. Give me starter code for an ALU. Oh, and let's go down to the bottom. Here's an example of a simple ALU implementation in System Verilog, and it's going to go ahead and start instantiating it. Um, then I'm going to ask it to do something a little more complicated that uh, I tried asking it to do this the other day and it started failing and it really showed that while they call this an AI, it doesn't quite have critical thinking skills or logic skills. It can only tell you what it's seen in its training data. Um, it doesn't actually, it isn't actually thinking uh, when it tells you answers. It's just uh, oh, here's your text, and here is 
statistically correlated text that from my database and I'm gonna formulate it in an answer according to rules and stuff. Um, cool, so we got a opcode for bits and there's your opcode. Whoa, uh, all right, right off the bat, this is terrible. We're not gonna have nested ternary operators. Uh, can you rewrite the code using a case statement? I'm actually really surprised by that. It did not try to do that to me yesterday. But one of the things I saw was I asked it to generate a, a carry look ahead adder and um, it gave me a output signal for the carry out, but then it also made the sum 33 bits. And so it basically gave me two bits when I only need one bit for my carry out. Um, and I thought that was interesting. Okay, how do we do? Okay, this is looking better. So we got an opcode at any signal change. Uh, if the opcode is all zeros, that's an add, um, subtract, logical and, or, XOR, bit shifting, and a multiply. Add a opcode for trying to think of something uh let's just try this matrix multiplication <laughs> here's an updated version of alu opcode with matrix multiplication i'm going to be very interested to see how it does this so we have a b which are both eight bits and output which is eight bits and i think there's already a problem matrix mult a b what is it the dot product what is this Okay, so it just called, what? Adds a new opcode for matrix multiplication. Implements the corresponding operations using the matrix mult function. Um, takes two eight bits and result is the matrix multiplication. The implementation function is not shown in the code. You can implement yourself based on your specific requirements. Um, implement matrix mult. This will be the last thing. And we'll wrap up this video for me. Ooh. What is it doing? Uh, yeah. Ooh. Takes two eight bit inputs, and the result is the matrix multiplication. Uh, initializes two four by four matrices for that eight by eight and called it a four by four and then what are we doing that looks like a matrix multiple yeah this is a nested for loop um, this looks pretty similar to the VEC math um, library I got that on one of my repositories. No, we're not going to get into it. Uh, I'm kind of skeptic. When you start asking it to do really advanced stuff, it just isn't really able to... It can, it can give you pretty good responses and pretty good starting points, but don't expect it to write your entire projects for you. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.